Chevrolet no longer offers cheap, compact sedans and hatchbacks. While they were about as sought after as apple cider vinegar, just like that vile concoction, they had a purpose, and the new Trax returns to fill that void. But this time, it's better. Since more expensive SUVs have started to replace almost everything, it's great to see that Chevy can still make one for $21,000. Even fully loaded, it is still well under 30. And unlike the old model, it doesn't look like a TJ Maxx clearance section SUV. I don't like to dig into the aesthetics much, but it's worth noting that in person, this has a stronger presence than most other subcompact SUVs, many of which are more expensive. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. They also make them in a few different styling flavors to better fit your taste. You can still get a pretty bare bones model with steel wheels, but it will still feature LED headlights. Step up to the LT, you'll find things like these sharper LED DRLs. Proximity unlock and lock then becomes available for just a little more cash. Then you have either the RS or active grades to add a sporty or tough look to your three cylinder front wheel drive subcompact crossover. Truthfully, I was shocked when I saw the price tag and the photos of the interior and exterior of the new Trax. I was soon given a bit of a reality check. The interior of the Trax has a sharp style to it. Nice lines, good looking, physical buttons and dials. The upper trims are caked in piano black plastics, but the construction of the interior is a step above the price tag. And no matter what trim you get, you have some contrasty color accents to keep the Trax from feeling too dreary. On some grades, it can continues onto the door and the seats, though the fluorescent yellow accents of my active trim does remind me of my running shoes in eighth grade. The Trax does do a lot of things right, but given this price point, it has to cut some corners. One area that you can feel the budget constricting it is in the materials. While I do like the texture it takes on the dashboard, you got a lot of hard touch plastics and you also have this kind of rubbery vinyl stuff without any padding whatsoever where your elbows rest. It feels durable, but that does affect your comfort. At least the infotainment system is very easy to use. It has a quick response time and good resolution. I found Apple CarPlay to on occasion not connect, but I'm happy to see that as wireless on both the eight and available 11 inch touchscreen. The interface is also easy to use and available is a half-baked digital gauge cluster. Can you cycle through pages of vehicle information? Not really. Are there dedicated controls on the steering wheel? No. Can you make your speedometer go counterclockwise? Of course, don't be silly. Most tiny multi-function displays offer more configurations and info than this fully digital setup. One neat thing about it, it actually tells you how many seconds you are behind the car in front of you. But overall, there's a lot of potential there and there's also a poor use of button real estate on the steering wheel. Despite them saving space by putting the skip track and volume buttons on the back side of the steering wheel, here they're comically chunky and the lane departure button also has an odd placement. Storage in here is good. You have a deep center console, a couple nice cubbies in the center, along with an available wireless charger. You'll find available heated seats and a heated leatherette wrapped steering wheel. Automatic climate control is something you'll find standard on the LT. And really, I like that Chevy uses reasonably priced packages to get you extra features. That way, if you don't want a sunroof, you don't have to pay for it. One of the biggest reasons to skip the low trims is the four speaker audio system. The LT adds tweeters to make for an adequate listening experience that should be much more clear. It's also comfortable. The seats are soft, they're bolstered lightly. The thigh support is sufficient with lumbar adjustment coming standard on only the active grades, unfortunately. I am a fan of this synthetic Evotex leatherette material. It feels pretty tough. You'll find cloth on the LS and LT. A larger selling point to the tracks is its big back seat. At six foot three with the driver's seat in a comfortable yet not excessive position, I can fit behind myself with a little knee and head room to spare. The seats themselves are comfortable, storage is good back here, there's no driveline hump, and we got charging ports. Yes, the materials back here are the cheapest things that Chevy could scrounge up, but like the rest of the interior, this feels durable and easy to clean. And the headrests can be folded to make for better visibility. The cargo area of the Chevy Trax is really impressive. Not only does it have size over a lot of its competitors, it also has nice touches like a spare tire and a little cubby that's good for things that you don't want sliding around. With everything folded, this is quite the versatile vehicle for the money.
The new Trax provides a fresh aesthetic and good space, but can it seal the deal on the road? Well, something that doesn't really hurt it or help it is the powertrain. We have a 1.2 liter turbocharged inline three cylinder. That on its own may anger some people in the comment section, though I've experienced what a three cylinder can be capable of, so I'll keep my mouth shut. And here it does provide good grunt for this size vehicle. In fact, it has more torque than a lot of its naturally aspirated competitors, though it's 137 ponies will keep it from feeling like a rocket ship. The transmission and the engine work pretty well with one another. It's hooked up to a long running six speed automatic transmission. Most of the time it operates in the background. It does like to stay in the highest gear possible. Sometimes it shifts a little rough, but if you care about driving at all, I think you'll probably prefer this sort of powertrain over the 120 horsepower and CVT Hyundai Venue. that peppy launch resulted in a zero to 60 of 8.1 seconds. The combination of torque and good gearing allows this to get off the line with a remarkable level of haste. Once you hit about 40 miles per hour, she really begins to feel like an economy car. It's 65 miles per hour. That's cruising around 20, 200 RPM. At any velocity, the road and tire noise, when you're considering the price, are well muffled. Another controversial part about the Trax is that it is front wheel drive only. This is a limitation, but remember, it's a substitute for a subcompact car. Saying this needs all wheel drive would be like demanding an armor piercing paintball gun. There's already plenty of options if that's what you're looking for, including the Trailblazer. When you're buying an affordable car, you also want it to be cheap to run. And the gas mileage here, it's okay. It being an SUV and it having a smaller engine, it may have to work a little bit hard on the highway, causing your gas mileage to be a little below average. But in the city, it fares better. Taking the tracks over a mildly frightening road, it's pretty comfortable. I don't think it's as unbothered as something like the more expensive Subaru Crosstrek. Of your small to medium size, brakes in the pavement, the tracks insulates you well. Over the repeated stuff, it does get a little bit jittery around back due to the torsion beam rear suspension, but I think in most settings, your average consumer should be pleased with the way that the tracks rides. Throwing it around corners, body roll, not too bad. The steering in here is numb, but there's not a whole lot of vagueness or play on center. It's weighted nicely and builds up a little bit as I'm going through corners, so it feels accurate. Even when the road gets a little rough, the tracks can change direction without too much drama. While this makes it athletic as a cheap subcompact, many of its subcompact crossover rivals are more confident. The Mazda, Honda, and redesigned Crosstrek are more engaging too. When it comes to inexpensive cars, Chevy has a pretty hit or miss reputation for reliability. The first generation Cruze, the old Equinox, proved to have some expensive problems, but that doesn't mean that they've all been bad. The six-speed automatic here has now been fairly well proven. The 1.2 liter turbocharged engine was introduced for the Chevy Trailblazer in 2021, and that too hasn't had big widespread issues. Potential intercooler icing is something I've seen discussed in forums, but I haven't heard of owners actually struggling with that if they let the car warm up a little in frigid temperatures. Carcomplaints.com said AC and braking bugs were some of the biggest problems of the previous gen. 1A Auto says watch out for oil consumption, radiator leaks, and turbo wastegate problems. Because of Chevy's past, I would be hesitant to recommend this to Toyota folks, but the powertrain has proven itself enough to where I wouldn't call predicted reliability a drawback. Safety-wise, this has yet to been tested by the IIHS, but it will come with autonomous braking and lane departure prevention as standard. Blind spot monitoring and adaptive cruise are options, but there's no lane centering available with the tracks. All it does is keep you from drifting out of your lane. I think the Chevy Trax is one of the biggest turnarounds for a nameplate that I've ever witnessed. Nobody wants a car to feel cheap, but everybody wants a cheap car. If you're making a vehicle with this kind of price tag, you're gonna need to find the right places to cut corners, and I think they did with the Chevy Trax. It has the versatility and features to satisfy a wide variety of people. Its increased ride height also improves its broad appeal compared to other small cars. 
Plus, I think the style and interior are crisp enough to distract many from its cheap materials and middling tech. Same goes for the drive. Comfort, handling, road noise, passing power, it doesn't fall short in any of those areas, which further conceals its bargain identity. What we have here is a solid economy car masquerading and drinking fuel like a small SUV. This is an outstanding car for under 25 grand. If you're strict on that budget and you need this form factor, I'd say go for it. I could end it there, but I also drove this back to back with the new Crosstrek. And in nearly every way, the Subaru was better. The added resale value sweetens the deal too. Every day, people, including myself, wish for more affordable new cars and crossovers that give us the basics without embarrassment. The Chevy Trax answers that call. I'm happy to see this as an option, yet as cliche as it sounds, you still get what you pay for. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like to help me take on the maniacal YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more fun, detailed car content without fluff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Because of that peppy launch, 0-60 to 60 came up in a very respectable... Ugh.